April 24th, 1916, Aloysius Martin Thez, later nicknamed Lou Thez, was born to two working class immigrant parents of German descent. He grew up speaking German and learned English at age five in kindergarten. Wrestling was in Thez's blood. His father was a national Greco-Roman wrestling champion in Hungary, and he trained Thez as a young boy. The young Luthez idolised the greats of the sport, such as Ed Strangler Lewis and John Pesek. He wrestled for his high school team as well as training in boxing. After dropping out of high school by age 14, he began training in freestyle wrestling at Cleveland High School as his father knew the coaches. Thez won regional tournaments and amateur championships before catching the eye of Tom Pax. Tom Pax was a pioneer promoter during the wrestling industry shift from legitimate contests towards the worked matches that you see today. He sent Luthez to George Tragos for further coaching. Tragos, who was a feared Greek Olympic wrestler in his own right, was impressed by Thez's work ethic and ability to follow instructions. Tragos would train Thez for around four years at the National Gym in St. Louis. He taught Thez submission wrestling and how to wrestle from the bottom. During this time, Tragos told Thez, any fool can start on top. If you start at the bottom, you learn to wrestle. Thez was also coached by Ray Steele, the American wrestler Peter Sower, who was known as Ray Steele, not the world of sport wrestler from the 1970s. Thez would undergo brutal conditioning drills and competitive wrestling, training sometimes for up to 10 hours a day. With that quality of training, Thez was destined for greatness. Thez was a legitimate shoot wrestler and was one of the most dangerous grapplers in the world. This skill that he had acquired allowed him to impress Ed Strangler Lewis, who he met in St. Louis and challenged to a friendly contest. Thez lost the exchange, however Strangler Lewis was so impressed by Thez's abilities that he later became Thez's manager and trainer, teaching Lou Thez painful submission holds that could potentially cripple an opponent should he refuse to lose. It was during his training under Tragos and Steele that Thez would make his professional wrestling debut in 1932 at the age of 16. By 1937, he had become one of the biggest stars of the St. Louis Territory, defeating Everett Marshall for the American Wrestling Association World Heavyweight Championship on December 29th, 1937. He was the youngest World Heavyweight Champion in history, winning the belt at age 21, and many speculate that this match wasn't a work at all, and was in fact a shoot, a legitimate contest between the two men. This victory marked the first of six impressive title reigns, which included the NWA World Heavyweight Championship that he held for a combined total of 10 years, 3 months and 9 days. It was 1948 when the National Wrestling Alliance, or the NWA, was formed. The purpose of the alliance was to create one world champion for all the various wrestling territories in North America. Orville Brown, the Midwest World Heavyweight Champion at the time, was named as the first NWA champion. When the NWA absorbed Thez's promotion at the time into their alliance, the plan was for Luthez to take on Orville Brown in a title unification match. However, tragically, Brown was involved in a car accident weeks before the match, which meant the end of his career. As the number one contender at the time, Thez was awarded the NWA title, which is rather anticlimactic. It's not exactly how you want to become champion, but it's not like they were spoiled for choice in that scenario. Thez wasn't just chosen because he was the number one contender, he was also chosen as champion for his ability to legitimately shoot wrestle just in case other wrestlers and promoters would attempt to double cross in order to gain the title. See, these days we all know about the Montreal screw job, but in truth, that wasn't a screw job. It was a double cross, which was actually really common in wrestling for a long time. Certain promoters and wrestlers in different territories would want to get their hands on the NWA title, and nobody wanted to expose the business and let anyone know it was worked, so they could get away with it. Wrestlers would cinch up on a small package or find some other way to legitimately beat the champion in order to keep the belt for their own territory. Thez was the ideal person to foil this, because he was such a legitimate fighter. In fact, later on after retirement, Thez would warn wrestling champions that he met to be wary of double crosses. They were unsurprisingly quite common in his time. Between 1949 and 1956, Thez set out on a mission to unify all the existing world titles into the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. However, in 1956, he would drop the belt to Whipper Billy Watson and took time off to recuperate from an injured ankle before returning to regain the title seven months later. In 1957, whilst defending his title against Edouard Carpentier, Thez suffered a back injury which would make him lose the final fall of a 3 out of 5 falls match. 
the NWA refused to recognise the title change due to the injury. After recovering from his back injury, Thez went on to Japan to defend the championship there. During his bouts with Ricky Dozan, Thez popularised wrestling in Japan, gaining the sport mainstream acceptance. This would lead to the Japanese knowing Thez as a god of wrestling and nicknaming him Tetsujin, which means Iron Man, due to his impressive conditioning and skill. Thez realised the zeitgeist for wrestling that he had created in Japan. With the money he was making, he wished to continue defending the title there, but the NWA promoters refused. Thez later asked to drop the title to his own choice of champion, Dick Hutton, despite Buddy Rogers at the time being a more popular and obvious choice for the next champion. Thez and Rogers had real life heat. Thez would later go on to say that whilst Buddy Rogers was an excellent professional wrestler and a showman, that Buddy Rogers was also a manipulator behind the scenes, who allegedly frequently in private said, screw your friends and be nice to your enemies, so your enemies will become your friends and then you can screw them too. This animosity, both in and out of the ring, is perhaps what made the rivalry between Thez and Buddy Rogers over the years so compelling. To this day, Lou Thez's match with Buddy Rogers is his most viewed match on YouTube. Thez had one of the longest careers in professional wrestling history. He wrestled his final match on December 26, 1990 at the age of 74. This match is a testament to Lou Thez's conditioning and in-ring ability, with Thez wrestling a competitive and compelling match. I would not want to fight that 74 year old. Thez would go on to start his own wrestling school in 1988, as well as writing an autobiography titled Hooker. This was a phrase commonly used for catch wrestlers, not an implication of anything else, get your head out of the gutter. Luthez's influence on wrestling can hardly be understated. The Luthez press is still a staple of many wrestling matches, as well as the fact that the guy invented the powerbomb, which was in part inspired by the pile driver and looked awesome and real when Thez did it. Thez came from a time where, if you wanted the business to make money, you didn't expose that the business was a work. He had no choice but to make it look real and had all the necessary experience to make that happen. So rightfully so, Lou Thez is often regarded as the greatest professional wrestler of all time, and that's a hard one to dispute. Many people talk about the concept of a Mount Rushmore in professional wrestling, and I think that Thez definitely deserves a place on there as the true pioneer of the sport that he was. I definitely have more Luthez content in the pipeline, there's just so much to this guy that I couldn't possibly make only one video about him, so be sure to stay tuned for that. This video was intended to just be a quick summary for those who may not know much about him. With that said, I've been Straight Up Wrestling, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.